Hello guys, it's been a while now, Mess Graphics here and today I'm going to be showing you how to design a simple church flyer design and I'll be using Photoshop CC to want to achieve this design. So guys, if you are new to this channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and also make sure to hit the bell icon to get notified each time I drop a new video. And also take note that all the files and all the forms that I'll be using for this project will be found in the description below. So with all that said and done guys, let's get started and let's start designing. Okay guys, so right now we are in Photoshop. I'm using 2000 by 2000 pixels, a 300 resolution RGB color mode and I'll be leaving my background at white. So let's get started. Okay, first of all, I'm going to place in um, the shape that I'll be using for this design. Okay. Then I'm going to take it to the top. And then we have this shape right here. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to import an image of a cross. That I'll be adding to this background to actually give it um, a different feel. Okay. Let me move it a little bit. Okay, that's done. Then I'll go to my blend modes. Okay, I'll go with um, overlay. Okay, as you can see, this is already progressing right now. So I'm going to place an actual overlay that I downloaded online. It's a PNG image. So the secret to creating great backgrounds in graphic design is actually having a different mixture of different elements. Uh, it actually makes your design to look unique and it actually makes your design project to look nice. Um, so I'm going to um, use Gaussian Blur to blur this a little bit. okay then i'll use um linear okay let me try um linear bone okay then i'm going to duplicate this then i'll select um both of them and i'm going to create a clipping mask then i'll select the whole background the whole elements that comprise them um, into the background and i'll group it and i'll name this group background okay then what i'm going to do this is that i'm actually going to place um, the logo that i'll be using for this project So, I'll take this to the top. Then I'm going to reduce this a little bit. Okay, I'll zoom this. So what I want to do actually now is I want to remove um, these um, right up. The crown of life mainly strays um, because I wanted to um I wanted to add a different write-up, not the same write-up, but actually in a different format. So we have um the crown. Okay, let me just um type that in. Okay. So I'm going to select all. And I'm going to change this uh, font to Trajan. Okay. Okay, this is okay. I'll go to my character tab and I'll make all these caps 
and then i'll set the tracking for this character i'll be using minus 75 then i'll work on the leading the secret to get uh to get getting a very optimal leading uh value is actually for example if you have your phone size set at 10 is actually advisable most times to make it to make your leading value either the same value with the font size or a value that is lower than the font size a little bit for example when i have my font size at 10 it's advisable to make my leading to be actually 10 or to make it 9 as you can see in my character tab just here at the left So leading is just the space between your tests. The vertical space. Okay, I think I'm done with this. Um, okay. okay so i'm going to align um, this then i'm going to align the logo to the center and here we have it okay So guys, let's head to the second part of this video where I'll be adding the theme for the program. So first of all, let's just put a present. And for that, I'll be using SQL Sans as usual. Then I'll still set my track into... Um, I'm busy loose tracking for this. Remember, in one of my videos, I actually explained the two types of tracking that we have in graphic design. We have the close tracking and we have the loose tracking. And like I said in that video, I normally use loose tracking for um, information that I know that are not that important. For example, presents. Um, I feel like um, presents is not actually important in the design, but I think that it makes a distinction between the team and the logo or the name of the church above uh, the design so i normally use it to create a, uh, a little bit of distinction between the logo and my team so most designers actually design their church flag without adding presence they'll just put a uh, dominion city super sunday so i think uh, that presence uh, actually makes more sense than just leaving it out there dominion city super sunday i think dominion city presents super sunday service sounds better than just dominion city super sunday service okay for the team abusing sql sans then i'm going to be increasing my font size okay let me try 72 nudge it a little bit then work on my tracking i notice that it's too close so let me just use 55 okay so if you notice i left the space between the n and the e this is because of i want to add um i want to add a different shape to uh i don't just want to write t i want to add a different shape to it that will actually represent the t and for that i'm using an image of a cross because i'm trying to pass the message that this program is all about encounter encountering jesus so you can't talk about encounter in christendom without talking about the cross like the cross was actually a place of encounter so i'm trying to incorporate that into this design 
So let me actually zoom in to get a better view of what I'm doing. Okay, Control T. Expand this a little bit. Then I'll use my color overlay and I'll change the color to yellow. Okay. So I'm going to duplicate this and then I'll just write retreat. So somebody asked me a question that why, uh, how do I make um, the fuse light on my test? Like the shiny light that you always see on my team most times. So I'll be showing you how I do, how I do that. Sorry. So first of all, let me align this um, test. Then I'll shift this cross a little bit because I don't want it to be covered by my test. Okay, what I normally do is that, first of all, okay, let me just um, expand this so you can see what I'm doing. So I'll select um, the cross and the test encounter retreat. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, convert it to a smart object. A smart object allows you to add different effects to your layer. So I'll go to blow, Gaussian blow, and I'll blow it a little bit. I actually duplicated this before I actually did that. Then I'll change it to screen. Screen is what adds um, the shiny effect to it. So um, this is what we have here. You convert your test to a layer max, duplicate it, use Gaussian blow to add a little blow effect to it, and use the blend mode screen. So what screen does is to actually make the test shine. The first layer that I use it, make it have that shiny feel. I love using it because it just makes my team look um, a little bit unique. Not to look too plain. So for the under tag, I'll be using 72 hours of total transformation. Okay. I'll reduce the font size a little bit. Okay, let me change the color. Okay. Okay, that's okay. Make sure it's aligned. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the dates for the program. But first of all, let me just group this. Then I'll name it team. Now take it up a little bit. Okay. Then I'll type in the date for this program. Okay. 
October 2021. Okay. So I've been increasing the font size a little bit. Okay. Let's leave it at 12. Work on the leading. Okay. So let me just align this to the center. So like I noted in the team, this is a retreat. So there won't be any need of putting time because a retreat is more like you come then you stay at the retreat center till the program runs through so what i'll just be putting as per time is that i'm going to put that the opening night for this program starts on wednesday at 5 pm so i won't be putting time for different um um different activities in the program i'll just be putting a uh, the time for the opening night because that's what you want to put in your flyer you may not be um prompted to put um the the programs in the flyer but what you need to put is the day the program will start so i actually adjusted the date um of the program from um by checking the calendar, uh, Wednesday, uh, October is not actually 10th, it's starting, but um, the dates didn't really matter, but I just wanted to make uh, that um, for reasons of clarity, like you always know this um, is not a real program, this is not a real church flyer, this is just for the essence of this tutorial. okay so let me set the color just a nice shade of yellow then i'll align okay to me quickly to me there are three things or let me say four things that i think that makes your design stand out that if you are able to adhere to it what it will really make your design stand out number one i think is alignment always make sure that your design is aligned that you are using the right alignment for your designs number two always make your fonts visible also be able to create a hierarchy between informations that have that you want to be seen more and informations that don't have high value number three make sure you use the right color that actually entails the information you are trying to pass like there are many courses online on color psychology where you can read the meaning of colors or what co or the information that each color passes for example if you notice in this design i'm using a red color you know that red has to do with blood and you know that anytime we are talking about encounter as you can see this um from the design you already know what i'm talking about you can see the cross you can see um blood and i don't need to tell you that this is uh, a program that is going to tell you about the death of jesus and the price that the death of jesus has paid for us so that's why i'm using red you can see that the red color is trying to tell you that we are actually talking about the blood of jesus and we are actually talking about the things that are in the blood of jesus so that's what uh, another thing that actually makes your design to stand out too is using the right image to pass the right information always make sure that the image that you're using for your design is passing the right information in that design
so that's the four things that i think that if you strictly adhere to it will make your design nice and i'm not saying um an honorable mention is actually using the right fonts know when to use a particular type of font know when to use a bold font know when to use a display font and know when to use a calligraphic or stylish font so all these things matters when you are creating a new design project so i'm going to group this together and don't mind me my designs when i'm designing for my clients i don't actually arrange my designs in this way you see i'm grouping different elements that is a different ball game when i'm designing for a client but the reason why i'm doing this is that even though i've not gotten it even though i've not gotten it i want you guys to get it too so that it won't be an issue for you guys okay let me zoom this out okay so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to be adding the picture of the guest ministers at this program So I'll be putting their pictures um, in the box. Okay, so I'll be placing this gradually. Okay. okay so i'll be adjusting this um appropriately so i'll be placing the third image in this design and it looks like i've been scammed i downloaded a png image and this is what I actually got. So I left it out in this design because I wanted to show you guys a way you can actually um, overcome the challenges you are facing. I, I really wanted to change the image. I really wanted to use a, a, a service like Cuts Pro. Uh, Cuts, I think it's Cuts, uh, dot Pro, Cuts Image Pro. I've forgotten that site, but I wanted to show you guys a way you can actually face this problem. So you won't always rely on the normal way of doing it you can actually use your hand to solve the issue because you can download the png image most times i noticed that the image is not a png image so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to use my hand to create the shirt for the man using the pen too so i could have just um used the cut out pro or used another image but I left it so that I can show you guys a new way you can actually face a challenge like this. Sorry for the initial noise, guys. Um, the my neighbor's dog has been barking, and I've been really trying to um, work on that, but we are getting there so i'm going to just use my pen tool to create um, some selection around his collar area and then i'll fill it with the color that i got from his shirt then i'll zoom out
and I'll merge this together. And then I'll bring it down. Okay. I'll create a clipping mask. Okay, then I'll, I noticed that uh, this image is not uh, covering the whole shape. So I'm going to select the image and I'm going to adjust it a little bit. Okay. So I'll be placing the last image for this design. Okay. So this is the the way I normally like placing my pictures because um, I think it makes it um, look simple. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to convert this to a smart object. See, there, I really wanted to explain what the reason why I convert most of my elements or my layers to a smart object. The reason why I convert this to a smart object, it makes it easy. To be edited for example where you're adding an effect a blow a gaussian blow filter effect or any filter effect or a ca uh, camera raw filter effect it works well on a it works well on a smart um it works well on a smart object uh, layer because it actually makes you to be able to go back to that filter effect and adjust it when you use it on a rasterized layer it may not let you edit it um later but when, uh, whenever you use it on a smart object you can go back and edit it again as you want for example you are seeing these smart filters and this camera raw filter anytime i want to edit it i go back and edit it and you notice that the values I use are still the same. The way you rasterize the layer before you use camera raw effect or Gaussian blur effect, you notice that you can't be able to set your values the same as before. So that's why I always convert it to a smart object. Like we all know, Photoshop is a raster-based design file. Photoshop is not a vector-based design file. So I've been wondering, kudos to the person that actually, um, that the first person to use Photoshop for design, kudos to the person because um, officially Photoshop wasn't designed to be uh, to be used for flyers or banners or anything of that sort. And for the past few days, I've not been using my system due to my um, crashed motherboard. I've also been able to discover different ways of making a design apart from using my system. Like I, uh, I discovered um, an app called PhotoP, uh, and that app is just very, very similar to Photoshop. So that's how I've been coping, guys. I've been using my phone to to run some designs, some urgent designs. But I had to say that I had to 
create a content for you guys so i had to actually take up uh, my guy uh, my friend system and create a quick content for you guys because i didn't just want to keep you guys hanging i know that um i don't have any system for now but um i didn't want to just relax um and based on the fact that i don't have any system to work with i have to i have to work for you guys and i have to make sure i get some content running up for you guys i don't have to just back down now so despite the fact that i don't have a system for now that doesn't mean that i won't be creating content for you guys i'll always be going ahead i will always be trying my best to make sure that i create content for you guys i create new content every week for you guys so i know it may not be easy based on the fact that i don't have any system with me right now but i'll always come through i'll always look for a way to create something for you guys So guys, the reward that I would just like to have from you guys, the, the happiness that I'll get from the sacrifices that I'm making is for you guys to subscribe to my channel. You guys should like my videos and also share with your friends. Like if you have a friend that is a graphic designer, you can tell him oh, I have a channel that has been helping you because I know that this channel might have helped you in a way or another so just tell your friends tell them, ah, there's a channel that i learned uh some tips from you can actually go to youtube and search my graphics and you can tell your friends to subscribe and also you can drop feedbacks on my social media channels you can drop feedbacks on my instagram like uh, recently i've been on instagram more than facebook so you can use the link on my channel that's my um snap link so you can use that to see all my social media handles on instagram on facebook on tiktok and all that so you guys can drop your feedbacks drop what you think if you have any question you can ask any question you want I also have my telegram group where where we discuss about anything design and also we also hold design classes so you can also use the link to join my telegram class so guys so far we are progressing with this design So it actually took time to get the pastor's names and everything done. So the reason why I'm duplicating this and nudging it, um, I could have just used my mouse to shift it. But the thing is that I want to make sure that I maintain the same line for all the tests that I'm actually typing in here. Crusaders Assembly Lagos. Like I said, all the information that I'm using for this flyer is is um just um more like they are not real, like they are just um mock information that I just had to put together to use and design this flyer. But actually, I did this flyer for for i did it for i didn't just do it for a client i just did it to um explore and learn so i decided to also share it with you guys so that you guys can also use it to learn too i don't know my background might be a little noisy this is because of i'm not actually at home i shot this video i recorded this video around um, 4 30 a.m in the morning so actually now i'm at the office so the office is a little bit um noisy we have a neighbor that has a dog around this area and, um, 
plus the cars that are passing in the road and all that. So the background is a little bit noisy. If I was at home, that's where I have my tools that I could have used to record uh, the video in a small serene environment. But let's just make do of what we have now, guys. We are getting there. So I feel like I don't really have anything to hide from you guys. Like we are all in a process where we are growing and I know with time I'll be able to give you guys the content that you guys deserve because you guys are amazing. I love you guys. Um, I love you guys so much and I'll keep on sacrificing all that I can to make sure that you guys get the best value of what you people subscribe for. Yeah. So I'll make sure that um, I try my best to attend to you guys' needs. And finally, 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 we are done with adding anything for the guest minister. Like it was really a long, long process here. Yeah. So I'll just group all of this together. And just align it once again to make sure that it's aligned as you can see in this design i'm maintaining a single type of alignment which is the center alignment and like i said this is a very good form of alignment because it makes your work stand out and it makes your work unique Okay, so what I'm going to add next is that I'm going to add the venue for this retreat. And I'm using Betel Retreat Center Owewe. This is not a real place, so I'll just um, change the color to black. Okay, first of all, let me increase this a little bit. Then I'll change the color to black. Okay. I, um, I'm going to place um, the logo that's the location icon Okay. So I'll zoom in. Um, I'll change the color of this icon. Okay. I'll select this and I'll group them together. Okay, let me, okay, okay. Take it up a little bit. Okay. I'm trying to look at the space that I have here because I have more information that I'll be adding. 
So what I'm adding is um, what the program features, like what um, will be actually thought or what will be what will be achieved in this program. So the first point I'm listing here is deliverance from satanic operations. I think I missed an E. So guys, tell me in the in the comment section like I really want um, um, a way that when I actually quest to get your views on the comment section, I really wish you guys will be able to open up more. So guys, tell me what you want me to work on next on the comment section like i've really tried a way to get that poll from you guys i really tried to create polls both on telegram both on whatsapp both on youtube uh, here on my community tab to ask you guys what do you guys want me to create next and i'm not getting any feedback so guys i really need you guys to comment on the comment section and tell me what you guys want me to create next whether be church flyer if you want more church flyers you can ask if you want um if event flyers or any other flyer you want you can just make it known on the comment section okay Excuse me. It's actually very cold here in Owe. It's raining now, and I think um, that's one of the reasons why the dog might be barking because the weather is really, really very cold right now in Owe. I don't know if that's the same for the location you are in, but really, it's really, really very, very cold here. So I'm going to select this, and I'm going to increase the tracking. Um, let me make that 1,000. Then I'll reduce the test size. Okay. So we are almost done with this design and I really love how the design came up to look like. I'm really pleased with what we have achieved so far. So I'll be adding the last information for this flyer. It's a prompt that tells them participants in uh, that want to, uh, people that want to participate in this program where to register and where to get details for their accommodation so visit tclmgospel.org for registration and accommodation details okay so let me reduce the canon And then in the accommodation.
Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, a little image at this empty area here. But first of all, let me group these um, elements that I just added and I'll name this down. And then I'll take it up above the background layer, above all the layers actually. So I'll place this image Okay Then I'll rasterize this uh, layer This will make it possible for me to use the eraser and for my brush settings, I'm using 1102 size and 0% hardness and a 6% flow. Then I'm going to clean some areas in the image. Okay, just a little bit more. Okay, so this is it, guys. So this is all we are going. This is where we're going to stop for today. Thank you, guys, for staying to the end of this video. Make sure that you like this video. Make sure that you comment and make sure that you subscribe if you are new to this channel. Thank you guys for staying to the end of the video once again. Mess Graphics out.